Okay, well, the next rate we're going to look at is the Fed funds rate. And this is banks lending to banks overnight. Banks which have a surplus of funds lending to banks which have a shortage of funds. And the overnight rate is called the federal funds rate. That is the rate that they'll lend to each other at. So as one bank lends to another bank, they'll, they'll lend at a rate called the Fed funds rate. And the weighted average of all of the sum of all the loans, the rate on all the loans, is called the effective, the effective federal funds rate. And this is the rate that the Fed watches and may from time to time move in particular directions to keep within a tight band. So it's the weighted average of all the loans uh, uh, out for the night that, that, that make up the effective federal funds rate. Repo rates, a little bit different than everything we've talked about so far in one key aspect. LIBOR and the Fed funds rate are unsecured. They are unsecured, but a repo rate, by its very definition, is a secured loan, a repurchase agreement. And this is how it works. I'll try to draw it out as best I can here. Uh, let's say that we have a bank on this side of the transaction, and we have a lender on this side of the transaction. And the lender can be the central bank, doesn't have to be, typically is. The bank will give to the lender, as security, a T-bill. The lender will lend money against that T-bill. <clears throat> and that's a loan. So it's a secured loan by the amount of the T-bill. The next day, this is next day. Look what has to happen the next day. Let's have our bank again. And we will have our lender. And the next day, it is reversed. The lender will give back the T-bill and the bank will pay the lender the money that it borrowed plus an interest rate. And this interest rate is called the repo rate. It is called the repo rate. You can have a repo rate for overnight, which is the more common one, uh, an overnight uh, rate. Let's see if I can write that correctly. Or if it's for a longer period of time, it is called a term repo. And there are very particular aspects of the repo that you should know. So, again, watch this. Let's talk about these repurchase agreements, or what are called repos. And the repurchase agreement and the reverse or special repurchase agreement are the major mechanism by which central banks uh, perform their open market operations to target their target uh, overnight rate. And uh, when you uh, uh, deal with the macroeconomics uh, part of the course, you'll deal with, we'll talk about specifically monetary policy and how it's done using these repurchase agreements. It's basically the sale of a security with an agreement to buy it back at a future date at an agreed upon price. Think of a pawn shop. You bring your guitar into the pawn shop. The pawn shop says, I'll give you 100 bucks for it on a two-week loan. Uh, when you come back, you've got to buy it back for me for 120 bucks. After two weeks, if you don't go buy it back, the pawn shop keeps the guitar and sells it themselves. But if you go back, you get to buy back your guitar. Well, it's the same thing. You're pawn but basically, you're not pawning a guitar, but you're pawning a security. So A, we'll sell a security to B, and B, we'll give funds to A. That's step one of the repurchase agreement. B buys the security from A. But in buying the security from A, they buy it knowing that there's already in place a repurchase agreement. So at the end of the term, A will then pay the repurchase price. This is now A going back to the pawn shop to buy back its guitar. It'll pay the original loan that it got against the guitar plus interest. So when you pay the repurchase price, you're paying off the original loan and you multiply that by 1 plus the repo rate, whatever the repo rate happens to be. And that's what you get, the original loan plus interest, right? Times 1 plus the interest rate. And the interest rate is called the repo rate. And the return of the security is called the repurchase 
a repurchase agreement. So A will sell the security to B on the condition that A will repurchase the security at the end of the term and repurchase it for the original price plus the repo rate. And the term can be one day, in which it's called an overnight repo. The term can be greater than one day, in which it's called a term repo. Anything greater than one day is called a term repo. Two days, five days, ten days, twenty days. If it's to maturity, it's called a repo to maturity. So if the security is a 90-day security that you're using and you get a 90-day loan, this is called a repo to maturity. In other words, you'll buy back the security on the maturity date of the very security that you've given. While B is holding the security, however, this is the beautiful thing. While B is holding the security, if the security pays interest, it belongs to A. So let's say that you have a security that pays 2%, but the repo rate is 1%. Well then you what you want to do is you want to sell as you want to buy as many of these 2% securities as you can and then enter into repurchase agreements to maturity and have somebody else hold the security while you get the interest rate and you make the spread. Isn't that beautiful? So from B's perspective, this is what are I've just drawn out a repurchase agreement. Now, the reverse repurchase is from B's perspective. From B's perspective, from step one to step two, B has, an engage, has engaged in a reverse repurchase agreement. The reverse repurchase agreement means that you're not selling the security first for money, but you're borrowing the security instead. In other words, you're not lending money, you're borrowing the security with an agreement to sell it back. So if you look at from B's perspective, what we've drawn out between A and B, B has a reverse repurchase agreement or sometimes called a special repurpose agreement. Now there is credit risk involved because the, 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 there is security. Yes, it is secured, but the value of the security could change over the term. So the funds that are lent are typically less than the value of the security. And the difference between the two, between the funds lent and the value of the security, is called the repo margin or the haircut. So if A does not repurchase the security, B can then sell the security knowing that there was a margin of error in there in case the price of the security changed overnight. Uh, and that's sometimes called the, re well, it's called the repo margin, sometimes referred to as a haircut.